What's going on? Yeah, it's uh, but the start of how are you by the way? Thank I'm good, thank you. Okay. And yeah, things are going a bit fine. Like I discussed last week. Mm -hmm. I've been doing things consistently. And I have been noticing some of your things as well. So one of the first things that I noticed was uh, I, sh I forgot to ask this question at X, but the question that I asked you in Signal, I believe, about how, about why sensitive people or do sensitive people have more active mirror neurons? And the reason why that question came up because so the question is, do sensitive people have more ne mirror neurons? Okay, keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's because, uh, like, my dad <clears throat> had a cataract surgery, mm -hmm. and doc I was there with him to support him, and the surgeon basically allowed me to, like, see the whole operating theater. Uh-huh. And I got uneasy when they just, like, removed his lens and put the new contact lens. I felt really nauseous and I had to vomit and come back. And this is when I realized like, is this what activation of mirror neurons is? Is it like actually experiencing what someone else is or would be experiencing if they are like in an operating theater. Well, let me ask you, let's do a thought experiment, okay? Yeah. All right, so imagine you're, uh, a surgeon calls you because he needs you to help with a surgery, okay? Okay. And you, they, put you on a gown, they put a gown on you and they put some gloves on you, and then he takes a razor blade and slices from here all the way down to the navel. And this, you could see the razor blade go right to the skin, and then you could see the blood start to ooze. And then with forceps, they start to pull it apart, right? And then you, yeah. start, you start to see the, the, the fat and the muscle and the blood and all that. What do you think would have happened? Uh, well, it feels uneasy, but blood would have come out, and I would have started seeing the patient's internal organs eventually. Well, what happened to me uh, was I got nauseous and I felt like I was going to faint, but the doctor that was there dropped something on the ground and told me to go pick it up to keep from embarrassing me, right? So when you put yeah. your head down, the blood goes to the head and then you aren't as uh, dizzy or nauseous. So what you had is very normal. It's called vasovagal syncope. And uh, it's very, very common at first. But nothing's difficult once you're used to it. So if you just had to do those, you know, for five days, did those procedures, even one, one a day, you'd be over it in a heartbeat. So it's totally normal. Very common and, and most everyone I know has felt that at some time or another, right? Especially if it's hot and you're standing up and you haven't, you know, you've been standing up for hours and hours holding retractors and stuff. Right? So, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's normal. Are you okay, though? Do you feel traumatized? or you feel like something's wrong with you or something like that? Uh, no, no, no. I'm not traumatized. If the nurses had been paying attention, they would have, could have seen that you were getting woozy. Right? Because you're new, right? And yeah. uh, if they'd been really sharp, they would have dropped something and told you to pick it up or said, hey, maybe you ought to go get some water or something. Because that's a, that's a normal reaction. I've had it myself. Okay. okay. Yeah, but I didn't want to like disturb them a lot, so I tried not to like feel that. Right, right, right. No, exactly. You don't want. Yeah, you don't. The last thing you want is for the for the med student to fall face first into the chest cavity, right? And that's what happened. I've seen I've seen a guy fall face first, face planted into the patient's chest. This is in the ER, right? And then the surgeon, who's who's aggravated because now his hand's going to be dirty, he's got to have to scrub again grabs him back in the back of the head and pulls him up like this and throws him on the floor and keeps going. So it's very normal. Yeah, it's very normal. Good. I so. have had a heart to heart with the patient. <laughs> Something like that. 
back in those days when you if you if you helped them with surgery I, I did it as an orderly right back way back when and they would they uh, one guy I remember he said have you ever held a human heart and I said no and he said here and he, he, he takes my hand and puts it out like that over the chest cavity and he puts his heart in my hand it's still beating it's still hooked to the patient so now I have held a human heart in my hands so yeah so you, you get used to that very quickly very quickly I have you know, found respect for medical people, doctors and all. I still can't, I still don't like needles going in and out. I had to put uh, needles into, you know, they, the med students would, you know, when they could never find a, a vein, they'd send the med students, especially like two, three, four in the morning. And these poor patients, they, you know, they, they, they didn't have any veins left from chemotherapy and antibiotics and God knows what else. And it was miserable and it was hot and sweaty and, and trying to find a vein like that. Ugh, even to this day, it bothers me a bit, but not in the same way, right? So, yeah, you, if you put your head between your knees, right, uh, and get some blood to your head, you would have been fine. Okay. Did you vomit a lot? Not a lot. Yeah, yeah. But Vasovagal syncope. Very common. I wish all questions were that easy. So that was one part of things. Another thing was I had like a sudden interview last week like five rounds of interview and what kind of interview uh, what kind of interview second interview last week what kind uh i think four of them were technical ones and one was a behavioral one oh really and it was all sudden like recruiter said, uh, told me that there will be interview for me next day because they are having a hiring drive and i was like is it true what I hear about India that you guys are on fire? Your stock market's a outperforming bit, yes. China's, you know, what? A bit, I would say yes. Yeah, yeah, it's time. Yeah, it's, your, it's India's time. China, you, you, you've, the stock market in, in uh, India has outgrown China, which is not saying a huge amount, but it's saying something. And a lot of new capital is flowing in there and they're building new things and they're, they're developing a new attitude, leadership, right? So it's a growing place and you have the right demographics. Like most of the world has really bad demographics like China and the US, Japan, Korea, you know, countries like that. So, so there's bright days ahead, hopefully for India. Yeah, yeah. And, but actually regarding that interview, it actually went really well. Like I could do almost all of them pretty well, except for some or one or two interviews so I don't know how it went one or two interviews I, or one or two problems one or two interviews I would say like I'm not sure about them it was like just talking with me talking with an interviewer about some problem who knows but, all the things that are going into that who knows how many you know hiring firing you know growing slowing the growth doing this and that a lot of things are way out of your control right the main thing is yeah. you did you did did you do your best Yes. Did you yes. prepare? A, Did you uh, prepare? Yeah. Like okay. I so then, 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 then you're set. Now you, now you can go to sleep tonight and just sleep with the angels because you did your best, right? And you prepared. Now it's out of your hands. Yeah. That's what I was reminding myself as well. I think the fourth agreement, I believe. Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Four, yeah. 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 Yo, remember that book? Yeah. Do your best. Absolutely. So, but I was noticing some of things. Have I ever recommended any Castaneda to you? Carlos Castaneda? Yeah, yeah, The okay. Strange Reality. I haven't read through it all, but I may read through it because I'm reading a lot of self-help books and I wanted to read something else. Yeah, this is more, this, is, this was a bestseller. Okay, so it's very entertaining. And it was like at the top of the bestseller list for years, right? And he was on the cover of Time Magazine, all this crazy stuff. And so it's a very entertaining series, and within it are some very useful uh, uh, methods, you know, from the new world. And so yeah, read it for entertainment, and then let's talk, you know, see if there's anything that interests you. Yes. But uh, I think I had interviews as well, and this uh, Sunday I went to the, the Toastmasters again, 
Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. hmm. Is this what being stressed about is that? And like, I was thinking, is this why like soldiers are trained to like uh, in a really worst case scenarios, so that when the worst case scenario actually happens, they have more range of thoughts that would help them get out of those situations. I suppose, but you, it doesn't have to be that complex. It could be, you know, if you're playing tennis, right, you practice a lot of different moves, right? And you're practicing, who knows what you're going to need. I'm not a tennis player, but, but, and then when the time comes and they hit a ball very fast over the net, you respond without even thinking, right? You, so, so you don't even have to think. Your body responds automatically, right? But this is a little bit different because it's requiring some thought. So let's look, let's look into that a little bit more. So... When you say word of the day, what does that mean? Uh, so it's like uh, they usually have a word of the day and face of the day and they expect or not expect, they, they kind of they expect each of the Toastmasters to try to use these words and face of the day in their interaction. I tell you what, let's do this. Uh, give me a moment. Uh, pick a, a number between, I'm going to just use this box here, right? And we're just going to pick a word at random. So pick a number between 1 and, say, 20. Okay. And when, I, when you say that, when you give me the number, I'll give you a word, and then I want you to talk about the word for a bit, okay? Okay. All right, so pick a number. Uh, 15. All right. Audio. I'm going to ring the bell, all right, in just a bit. And then just talk about audio, anything about audio. You ready? Here we go. Audio is the way we hear things. It is one way of transmitting, what should I say, the information from source to destination. Mm -hmm. and It travels slower than speed of light, but that's fine. And bats just use the audio or the reverberation or whatever the reflection of the sound they produce to like, calculate distances and navigate themselves. Mm -hmm. But these are all desperate thoughts, I would say. Like, no, 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 that's good. That's good. That's good. That's very good, actually. So let's try it again. I'm drowning in books. And, oh, I could just reach back here and grab one here. Oh, let's see. Okay, let's try it again. And uh, first, pick a page number. Pick a, a, a page number between one and one and uh, nine hundred. Uh, three twenty-three. Three twenty-three. 
Okay, now pick a, a line between 1 and 20. 11. By the way, this is a, a, a sophisticated uh, thinking tool also that's used by DeBono, and I'll tell you about that later. So 11. Okay, now pick uh, between 1 and, say, 10, a word. 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Potency, potency. Absolutely. Okay, so you got it. You got it. Then all you have to do is practice, right? Okay. And that's, I think that's called a PO, a P-O, right? And there's a book by De Bono called uh, Serious Creativity. And in that book, he lays out about four or five different thinking, creative thinking tools. Are they, you paid thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for this. The corporations did in the, in the 90s or 80s and 90s and so on and so forth. He's a very, very uh, influential guy. And so you could start with the six hats or you could start with uh, uh, serious creativity. And he describes those, those tools like that. So you could just pull yourself, you know, a, a little bit and just practice it. That's all. Just pick, t pick three random, you know, pick a page number, pick a, a, a sentence number, then pick a word number, like page 89, seventh line, sixth word, you know, and then ask somebody for a book and then do it and just practice. That's all. You've got it. You've got it. You've got it perfectly. Perfect. Just practice. That's all. Like I did read the six uh, thinking hats. Oh, you did. Okay, good, good, good. So you already have that one. Yeah. So all right. I'm not to see his creativity. I guess this way he introduced later in creativity. Like he talks a lot. No, the, I don't think the poll is going to be in the six thinking hats. Good. Right, and I may not have the Poe exactly. I, I adapted it for my own use, right? So I don't know exactly how he does it. But, but so, and the Sufis are very, very uh, sophisticated about this, the use of random impacts, boom, to the brain, so you aren't going down the same rut over and over. Did I describe uh, De Bono's thinking uh, model of, the, of, of thinking? No. Okay. Oh, do I have do? Is it on a video? Good. Does it where I show the little the little tray with the water going down? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Perfect. All right. So good. 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 So good. You're, you're ahead of the game. So now, thank you. That's great. That means the videos are working. Yeah. I mean, people are using them, which is their purpose, right? And so yeah. other people will learn from this, and then it's just much more efficient for everybody, right? And 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 many many reasons to do it this way. So you know that the the the, the brain tends to go down a rut, right? And, and, and we have very limited thinking skills. Like, for example, in the U.S., there was, you know, a lot of uh, distress, not just the U.S., but in all of the Western world, uh, because there was an attack in Israel, right? But people yeah. immediately go to, which side am I on, right? And that's just uh, limited thinking, right? You, ha you have to see the whole situation. And the last thing you should be worried about is which side to take. First, you have to understand everything, right, as best you can. But, but people have been so conditioned to, to automatic thinking and to just following the herd that you can count on them to do that, which is your advantage, right? So, so already you know there's more than two ways to do something, right? And already you know there's, more, there's at least six ways to look at any decision, you know, emotionally, cognitively with data, you know, uh, creatively, so on and so forth. You know, you, you know those. And so... That's a huge advantage when it comes to, to actually doing something creative, which is really what's going to matter in the future. And it certainly matters as you're looking for a job, right? Yeah. Because later, what they're, they're not going to want to know what you, what you know. They're going to want to know how well can you think. And you've got a good brain. So you. good for you. Yeah, you just have to learn to use it. But you're doing uh, that, so that's great. I, I had 
this question regarding uh, what you said that people don't think a lot and i i was thinking kind of a imaginary for life imagery for life like is mm-hmm. this correct or not like, is what can we treat uh so i have this imagery for imagery life. for a life okay yeah. you, imagery for I, a life whose life yeah. I don't know anyone's life. I know I'm generalizing it a lot, and I don't know shit. I, I, well, I okay, but let's talk about it. What's going on? Yeah. So this is how thing I think I face. Like everyone is like a ship in the ocean. Uh huh. Some have been spawned near island with large resources, and some with none. Uh huh. There is the randomness of start, but like ship moves at constant speed. For everyone, like time moves the same for everyone, right? Mm-hmm. But only thing that one can control is the direction of the ship, and in addition to that, the uh, the direction, right? They mm-hmm. can only shift it by small angles. Like they can't do like ninety degree turns and all. How it's many? How many people on the back. boat? How many people on the boat? Uh, I would say everyone has their own boat. Okay, so everybody has their own boat, and yeah. where? How far are the boats from the shore? Don't know. It totally depends. It's random for everyone else. Okay, so there's these. Everybody gets a boat, and everybody's on the ocean, and the only thing you control are the 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 direction of the boat by a few degrees. Okay. Yes. Good. 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 Keep going. And is this? Like and by few degrees, it's because it's really difficult to change one's personality or change oneself a lot, and like most often than not, people. Why would you want to do that? I don't know. I was just thinking in between about why it takes a lot of effort for some people to just change themselves and like. No, the goal of this is not to change yourself. This the goal of this is to grow yourself. You know, the, the, the Sufis have a saying. When you get to the gates of heaven, right? In Christian, there's an image of heaven with these gates, and St. Peter's there at the gates. Yeah. They're not going to ask, like, this is the way I was taught. They're not going to ask, why weren't you more like, you know, uh, Buddha? They're going to ask, why weren't you more like David? Right? Why weren't you more like, you know, I don't want to say your name in public, so I won't, but, and don't. But the point is, the the goal of this is not to make you into somebody different. The the goal of this is to make you who you are fully, right? Now, there's many strengths to your personality, right? At the moment, you're not feeling them because you're out of a job and, and, you know, you're worried about this and that and you're still starting. You may have gotten a little later start than you should have or whatever, but your personality is fine and you've got a good heart and a good mind. So why would you want to swap that out? For a little discomfort right now because everything that's in adversity now will become a strength later and that's how it goes okay so but let's go back to this thing this sounds interesting so there's all these little boats on the ocean keep going yeah i have one question regarding this that mm-hmm. i think you said you can't contrive to want something in life so this is where like if suppose someone reaches a show can be seen as someone getting something they want. It's it's difficult to contrive, except if it's within the range of the rudder that they. What have. does contrive What does contrive mean to you? Contrive means to me like. Why don't we look it up? Why don't we look it up? Why don't we look it up? Let's look it up real quick. Because it's got two syllables, right? And con is in it. So create or bring about by deliberate use of skill and artifice. So manage to do something. So, yeah. Using artifice. Yeah. Okay. So contri- to contrive is to use do something artificial. Yeah. Essentially, oh. yes. Okay. So now, why would you want to do something artificial when you could do something authentic? I don't understand. Uh, like, wouldn't getting a job be contrivance in a way because you can't? Yeah, just... Okay, okay, I get your point. I get your point. 
Well, first of all, what they say is that contrive. Okay, first of all, there's nothing about this this uh, project that is an absolute fast hard rule, right? It it violates every tenet of this work that you don't adapt to circumstances. Okay, so flexibility is the rule. Naturalness is the way. Simplicity. And the problem with contrivance is that if you do too many artificial things, number one, they don't they don't hold up as well. And also you have to remember what they all were. Whereas if you're just honest and straightforward, right, and simple, then you don't have to worry about all that. And I know from years and years of experience, the amount of energy that you use with all the little games that you're playing in the back of your head, you don't need them. They don't help you really. And if they do, it's only going to help you for a short time because no one can drive beyond a certain point. And beyond that point, contrivance is fatal, right? So, so this is something you have to learn by watching. There are people in India, just like there are in the United States, who have gotten where they've gotten by trickery and by contrivance and by artificiality or because they know somebody or something like that. And they'll do fine for a while, but watch what happens later, okay? And so the question is, so do you know what imposter syndrome is? Yeah. Well, people who don't contrive never have imposter syndrome. They're just honest. That's all. It's, it's simple. And so you find a lot of tricks and, and uh, all kinds of tricks, but you don't need tricks because you've got the real thing. You've got a good brain. You've got a good heart. You've got, you know, you have infinite intelligence at your, uh, you know, holding you up, but you don't, you don't see that yet. Okay. And so uh, no need to contrive, no need to, to, to and, and no need to, need to get rigid either, right? Yeah, of course. And when you go for a job interview, you got to, you know, dress your best, you know, get a haircut, all, what, all the things you do, you know, shave or whatever you do to get, get the job. But that's not really contrivance. That's just adapting to the situation. Right? And you know when something's false, you can feel it. You know, and, and you could see it in your friends and you could see it all around you. You could see it in the grown ups. You could see it in the old people. You could see it in the young people. Who you don't see it in is young children before, before they're age of five or something like that. They're very straightforward. They're uncomplicated. Like before age of five, like what happens after age of five? Like oh, they start getting concepts and they start learning to play games and they start learning to be cute and they start learning to, you know, manipulate a little bit. So I had this question, does one know that they are alive, that is they are conscious after a certain age or do children know that they are alive right after? What that? is your earliest memory? Tell me all about it. I think it was during my dad's job at Mumbai when he was working in an offshore and I was in Mumbai's apartment mm -hmm. and I was playing with some of the cans, the soda cans mm -hmm. that he would usually bring from the offshore. It was, it so your, was father was wor your father was working offshore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did he do? What did he do? He was a mechanical engineer, so he was early in his career. So he's a worker. Your dad's a worker. Yeah. yeah. Good. So are you. You just don't know he had. <laughs> okay. So good. No, no, no. This is all good. So you were playing with cans. How old were you roughly? Certainly not six. So less than six, I would say. Five years? Had you started kindergarten? I think so, yes, a bit. I'm not sure. Maybe you can ask your mom how old you were sometime later. Okay, well, let's keep going. So, so, all right, so how do we get, I think it, what I wanted to teach you about was screen memories, right? And so, Something was going on, likely, I'm just going to take a guess, your mom might know, but something was likely going on in your apartment at that time, and what you remember is the cans, right? But something else was going on. 
That's called the screen memory. And so what you remember is a little fragment from your childhood, just a little tiny fragment, you know, the, the, a carpet, you know, a pillowcase, a sock on the floor. And that little, little bitty piece of a memory actually holds a big, huge other memory, but it's, it's, it's repressed or whatever. But that's, we don't need to concern ourselves with too much of that now. How about uh, dreaming? Have you been dreaming? Like these days, I would say yes. You've been dreaming? But I, yeah, but I don't have any control over the dream stuff. Not yet. Because you haven't looked for your hand and you haven't you know, started to do it. But if you keep trying, it will happen, right? If you're sincere. All right, and you think video games are fun. Wait till you get into a, a lucid dream and you can fly for reals. You know, you can do whatever you want with whomever you want, right? So just remember that and just, you know, just, you know bit by bit, you have to be patient, right? So let's go back to these, this, this ocean with all these single person boats in them, right? And they have a certain like light cone. Is that what you're saying? A, like, a certain... Yeah, not light cone. I, I, I just, it, it wasn't a good imagery of life. It's just that I just wanted to think that for some people to achieve something in their life, mm -hmm. it, took, it depends on where they started and how, what should I say, how uh, fixed they are or how like motivated they are to get to that position. Like, if it's like way out of their range, then they have to like manually try to change the direction at the maximum possible angle they can, but I think it's just a random thought and I don't think it's... Okay, all right, well, we won't go there, but explore it some more. There might be some variations of it that could be useful. Who knows? But you know, the, like, like I always say, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So yeah. make sure it's in the right direction, right? And there's cer certain things that never go out of style. Integrity never goes out of style. Honesty never goes out of style. Work, hard work, concern for others, that never goes out of style. You know, humor never goes out of style. You know, uh, it, caring about others and, and having some empathy for them, those things never change. And so, and, and then, you know, my opinion and me saying this means nothing, it's worth nothing to you, <coughs> literally but I'm going to state it anyway. Just behind your consciousness is consciousness itself. Just behind your mind is consciousness itself. And when you find that, then everything changes, right? And so that, that has to be the goal of life for some of us, because once you see what's there, right, the world will never look the same again. So as you're doing everything else and taking care of business, right? And business is different. I mean, if you're, if you're putting together widgets, you put together widgets. If you're a soldier, you, you know, you, you be a soldier. If you're a doctor, you be a doctor, you know, if you're a nurse, be a nurse. All right. And, and if you're very tall, maybe you play basketball, but if you're not, not very tall, you don't, you know, and it's, it's like, it's kind of like the idea that everybody has to be the same would be like us looking out at the, 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 the plants and the, and the trees and the, and the, and the flowers and the birds and saying they all need to look the same. And the Sufis have a story about this, about a woman who saw an eagle and uh, she didn't think it looked right because its beak was too big and its talons were too long. So she cut off the talons and then clipped the beak and said, there, now you look more like a good bird, right? And so that's ridiculous. We don't want any of that. No, we want you. But the real you, not the you that's like covered up with uh, neurotic conflicts, right? Did you see the one on neurosis? The YouTube on neurosis? Uh, I think I saw partially yesterday. I didn't see fully. Okay. Well, well, it's it's about it's about you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because we get conflicts. You know, the the heart goes one way, the mind goes another, and the body wants something totally different. The body just wants to eat some Twinkies. You know. So I so. Think, I remember you saying that neurosis is when at least. Do both of them have conflict with one another? Internally, internally. 
Yeah. And so what the warrior does, what the warrior does is get those in line and then you can't stop him. See, the reason, I mean, Elon is, is such a, a worn out example, but he's a perfect example in our lifetime. The guy is very, very clear what he wants. He wants to get to Mars. And so if he needs to build a car company to help support that mission, so be it. If he needs to finance companies, same thing. If the country's going to collapse because there's no freedom of speech and it's being taken over by, by uh, people that aren't very good sometimes, he has to do that too because he wants to get to Mars, right? But see, he's, he's, he's single, he's, you know, and so the same thing's true with, with wanting to wake up or wanting to grow up. If you just keep your eyes on the prize and just keep it there steady, you're way ahead of the game because most people are just wandering around like, uh, you know, have no idea what they're doing have no idea where they're headed, nor why, right? And so they're just kind of wandering around randomly hoping somebody's gonna provide for them, right? With a job or with a, a room in the basement or, you know, a, a PC, you know, with a big screen or whatever. And, and that's no way to live for some people. And you wouldn't be here right now if you were one of those people. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't see a problem. I which is nice. <laughs> I, I don't know, like last week, I had this strong emotion reaction to one thing. Good. Let's hear it. That was. It was negative reaction to be frank, and I don't know how to type with it. I will get a lot of hate and all, but it's like, I am like jealous of women getting differential treatment in STEM. So whenever I see like posts about women in tech and all, I have automatic react injustice being done to all the guys that have put a lot of effort. But okay, so, so well, 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 let's let's be clear, okay? But 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 I do think that they do need. Oh come on! Look, do you don't have to worry. There's no thought police here. Okay, well, I'm in a special protected zone where, where there's freedom of thought in this area. Okay, so don't worry about that. What I want to make sure is that you are using the word jealousy correctly, because that doesn't sound like jealousy to me. Look up jealousy. Like a state of being jealous. jealous means feeling or showing an envious resentment of someone or their achievements, possessions, or perceived advantage. Isn't okay. that what it is? No, it sounds to me like you 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 object to being treated unfairly. Let's say it wasn't women. Let's say it was only you know uh, Aborigines from Australia, right? And they got preferential treatment because they were Aborigine and they were from Australia. And they got treated better, and they got better jobs, and they got you know royal treatment because they were Aborigine. How would you feel about that? That, that, this is where conflicting thoughts come in. Like, okay. I don't feel really bad because people are putting in effort and all, but at the same time, these people may not have the required resources to ever achieve wealth. But see, jealous, Although, but jealousy, jealousy. Read the definition. You're, you're je read what jealousy says. It's you're jealous of their. Attributes. Achievements. achievements okay. Or, are you jealous of their achievements or are you jealous of the fact that they get preferential treatment? I'm jealous of their perceived advantages. I would say. Okay, so that's not jealousy. That's subjecting to unfairness. Okay. I mean, have you have you applied to the MBA recently? I haven't. I never even dreamt about going to the MBA because I'm not tall enough, right? No, and I'm not coordinated enough, and a lot of different things, right? But that's how life is. I mean, the trees are different sizes. The, the animals, you know, I saw a crow yesterday was the size of a hawk, beautiful bird, but it very, very different than the songbird. These are two different creatures. Good God, why would we want everybody to be the same? Now, I'm, of course, I'm not saying anybody should be discriminated against. I mean, I'm in a position to speak of that, right? I am in a very good position to speak of that, having you know, dealt with that all my life. But this doesn't sound like jealousy. This sounds like you, 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 it doesn't seem right that people who work just as hard and some of them get preferential treatment. That's called 
that's, that's, there's a lot of ugly names for that that aren't in use right now, but they're going to come back, right? So, so, I mean, would you want your airline pilot to be selected on the basis of being an aborigine from Australia with less skills? No, it's just nuts. So, I mean, you know, this will all work itself out. You don't need to concern yourself with this. Just do your best. Yeah. Let someone yeah. else fight those cultures. Are those spreading to India, really? Is that spreading to India? It has been there in the form of reservations. And like I too get why they have reservations for certain communities. Like they okay. are really backward and they do need support there. Okay, well that's I different. That Maybe you could help them. Yeah, but I feel like... No, I'm serious. I'm serious. That'd be really gratifying work. Seriously. So are these women from, from uh, more disadvantaged communities or are they just women? That's the thing. This time it's just women and women from even from communities who are forward thinking and can do whatever they can. I feel like they are the ones who are taking this advantage and... But it, see, that's contriving and it will all work itself yeah. out, all right? So, so it's like, it's like, what was her name? So we have some politician that decided she would just declare herself an Indian, right? Because she had like one twentieth or something like that Indian blood, but she's about as I'm, I'm twenty times more Indian than she is, more than that, right? Yeah. But it would never occur to a normal person to to fake your your ethnicity for your advantage. That would that would be like unethical, right? That would be wrong. But she's a politician, so we expect it from politicians. And that's one of the reasons that we're having so much trouble in our country. There's, there's no sense of, of decency, of, of fairness, of, of, of uprightness. It's, it's all turned into this like uh, silliness that has nothing to do with the work at hand. So don't concern yourself too much with that, but don't say you're jealous. I mean, maybe part of you resents the fact that you could work just as hard and not, get, not be treated fairly. But that's okay. It'll work itself out. I promise you. Because maybe you didn't get, uh, maybe we're untreated fairly here, but you're going to be treated more than fairly someplace else, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, to, so to, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about that at all, at all. And the thing is, again, I, you know, this is. It looks very much like the more adversity one faces, oftentimes the better one does in life. You know. I. Uh, you know. I'm. I don't know. It seems that way. Yeah, but I don't know. Like, I mean, not necessarily, time. but you know. Go ahead. But what if it doesn't happen? What if? What if what doesn't happen? What if people who contrive to get something done don't face any problem in their lives? Okay. Should I just let's? I tell you what. Let's get get back to me in twenty years on that one. Okay, when it's it's appropriate to talk about. But right now, you're just spinning fantasies in the future. Just like p people spent fantasies in the past, now we're just fantasizing. Right? It means nothing. All of that's just fantasy. More brain talk. Now, can you stop your thoughts, by the way? Yeah, yeah. You can? Yes. Okay, I'm going to ring the bell. I don't want you to think, okay? I'm going to ring the bell. I don't want you to think. How'd you do? I did have some thoughts. Uh-oh. How much space can you create between the thoughts? How long can you go without a thought? Maybe a few seconds. Okay, good. So let's do this. This week, from time to time, as often as possible, I want you to practice not thinking. So in the middle of your day, while you're doing everything else, just stop, stop. And don't think. How does one not think? Do they just put in, like, do they just 
they just concentrate on their senses? No, because that'd be thinking, wouldn't it? Would it be thinking? I don't know. No, you're not concentrating on anything. We'll try it, right? And when you have problems, let me know, and we'll work. We'll work on that, because that state of not thinking is very, very valuable in this work. Because in that state, with your mind silent, then the real consciousness begins to emerge. And if you go long enough without that noise, the garbage in your mind, you know, then the only thing that's left is con the real consciousness. And how about finding the boundaries to your mind? Have you found the outer boundaries to your mind yet? No. Okay, so that's so two, two, two things to work on this week. Why are you doing everything else? The interviews, the studies, the practices, everything, else, the, the exercises, the, the Toastmasters, and the, the gym, all the great stuff you're doing. That's great. Write these down. One, find the outer boundary of your mind. And two, see how long you can go at a time without thinking. And, and then check to see, okay, well, if I'm at home and it's late at night, I could do it better. Or if it's early in the morning, that I could do it best. Or if I do it before eating, that's better than after eating. Or, you know, you have to be a, a scientist here. You have to be an experimenter, right? But what do you mean by boundary, out of boundary of mind? Well, how far does your mind, how, how big is your mind? Um, infinite. I don't know, it's like a virtual world, right? Huh? Like, isn't it like a virtual world? Or is it something along the lines of different kinds of thoughts one has in their mind? I'm not sure. That's right. You have to find out. And you cannot go by somebody else's opinion, by the way. Don't get this stuff out of a book. First of all, they'll tell you all kinds of different things, and half of them are you know, cockeyed, right? But the, you have to find this out for yourself, okay? So just go into your mind and explore it. And if you have difficulties with that, we'll, we'll work on that too. Now, have we covered network of loci? No. Okay, so we're gonna make it three, okay? Now the network of loci practice goes like this. It's, it's really very simple. The main thing is believing that you can do it. So what you do is like, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at uh, the screen, I'm looking at you but I'm, I'm looking at this way, right? But I can also look from up there, from the top of this, uh, the corner where the wall hits the ceiling. And I can look down here, and I can see this whole scenario. Or I can look from over there, from the top of another wall, and I can look this way from above. Or I can look from the floor, down here. You know, I can look from down there. Or what's a, what's a tall thing around where you live? What's the tallest building or, or tower or something around where you live? I would say that it's this 3G or 4G tower. Fuji right? tower, okay. So look from up there, down, where we are now. You can do that right now. It's easy. Then look from the moon, right? Then look from a star. Then look from the street. Look from the, you know, the corner of a car, okay? The idea is that you can move the frame of reference, the, the point of view, wherever you want, right? It's like the Netavindra practice or, or description, except now we're, we're going to explore it and use it. And so, so we happen to look this way because of our eyes on our head like this, but if we were birds, we might look differently. And if we had compound eyes, we'd see something totally different. But in addition to that, we want to be able to move to different points of view. For many, many reasons, it'll be clear later. That's very, very useful. Very, very useful. So, for example, I mean, I'm not saying you should do this but yet, but at Toastmasters, you could see yourself from the audience. You could see yourself from the side of the stage. You could see yourself from the lights on above. You could see yourself from outside the building. You could see yourself from the top of Fuji Tower, right? All of these things are quite easy, trivial. And that's one of the powers of our brain that we don't use, but we should. And so one of the ways we could look at this work is just like teaching you how to use your brain in the, 20, in the 21st century. <laughs> Not that we've discovered anything new, but you know. <laughs> no, 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 De Bono made some real contributions. I got I, De Bono, yeah, and the Tibetan Buddhists too, they did some few things too. 
and the Sufis codified it all for us. And, and the wisdom, though, came down from, from way back, from the Vedas, the, the Gitas, you know, and through, through Buddhism and then through China, and then and it meet, meets up with Taoism, right? And then Taoism is huge, powerful, you know, force, but then it gets socialized with Buddhism. And, and all kinds of wonderful things have happened in the history of the world, and as well as horrible things, right? But we only learn about the horrible ones. Okay, and so so this is all good. So we have outer boundary of your mind. We have uh, I'm not going to remember any of these, so you have to remind me. Okay, uh, the network of loci. We have oh the space between the breasts, and there was one other one. What was it? Uh, how long can I go without thoughts? Yeah, that's the same thing as uh, the space between the breath. I mean, the space between the thoughts. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yep, sorry, sorry. Wasn't there one other one? The outer boundary of mind and network of loci. So, outer boundary of mind, network of loci, space between the breasts. And that's So, there were three? Three, yep. Yeah, okay. Remember, Mariah, because so, I won't. I've got too many other things. So, any questions before we stop? Or concerns, or thoughts, or anything. Feel free. I had this one question. Like, what is it better to do in life? Is it to be a jack of all trades, or like master of you? Okay, good question. There is something else more, so more important than all of that, right? That the others are like trivial in comparison. And that one is to master yourself, to, to, to become, instead of being mastered by your mind, instead of being controlled by your mind, you control yourself, okay? That's a way of putting it, right? And so, so to cultivate oneself is, is the goal. What you do in the meantime doesn't matter. You know, you can pick cherries. You, know, you can shine shoes. It doesn't matter. I mean, you know, have you ever heard of a guy named uh, Nisikardatta? That Indian guy, I am that, that guy? He sold bendies. I mean, one of the most admired men in India, well, maybe, well, he's admired in India, but in the West, right? He sold cigarettes for a living. That's not, that, see, all of that doesn't matter once you have what matters. And what matters is to have your own soul. And to have your own trajectory and to have your own, you know, feet on the ground and, and go and, and see what's out there. It's a beautiful world out there. And it's even more beautiful when you wake up and then it's unspeakably beautiful. So everything else is trivial. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're rich. doesn't matter if you're poor. It doesn't matter if you're tall. doesn't matter if you're short. It doesn't matter if you're alone. doesn't matter whether you're someone. All of that changes completely after you wake up and so if you have a shot at waking up and you do you know you're talking you went to Midas so you're gonna get a muffler right I think you should go for it do you know what that means do you know what Midas is Sorry. do you know what Midas is I just said if you go to Midas no. you're gonna get a muffler no. this is something my father taught me so okay basically Midas is a muffler repair uh, franchise and they, they were advertising, they used to advertise, you know, come and we'll check your muffler to see if you need a new muffler. And so my father, the rancher, said, son, if you go to Midas, you're going to get a muffler, right? So <laughs> it's a kind of a joke. So, so I'm kind of, you know, as you know, you know where my biases are, right? I believe in liberation. I believe in total freedom. I believe in, in immortality, right? Not believe in it. I, I don't have the right words, but you, you get the gist, right? So, but you're free to also throw, ditch that too, right? But this is not going to hurt you in any other one of your endeavors. In fact, it'll be, uh, it'll make you better at it. And so one of the big misconceptions that people have, people think that Taoists or Buddhists don't do anything, right? And they, because they look at the monks, right? But, the, but there's many, many very active, for example, highly illuminated Sufis and Buddhists, right? And other people, Taoists as well, 
but they don't advertise, right? They don't, they don't, they don't, you know, put up big banners and, and wear funny clothes and jump around and do funny stuff and dress in costume and drive, run around in circles like that, right? So there's a big world out there and welcome to it. But you want to be your own man. You don't want to be somebody else's slave. And as long as you're the, the, the slave, okay, if you, gotta, if you need some money and you got to work, you're, temporarily you're kind of their slave, you know, for at least for the hours they've got you. But you're taking the money for that and that's fair, right? But in your life, you don't want to be a slave to anything. You want to be a free man. And that freedom is something you have to fight for. Every man has to fight for himself. Just like knowledge, it won't be handed to you. You have to go get it. Okay? I think it's really difficult to answer. Like it requires a lot of effort. True freedom requires a lot of effort. It, fe it feels daunting to you right now, right? But think, imagine, imagine, how long have you been going to the gym? Okay, how hard is it now compared to when you started? It's way really easier now. See? Nothing, okay, write this down and put it, on a, put it on a banner somewhere in the back of your skull. Nothing is difficult. Nothing is difficult once you are used to it. Knowing that is a superpower. Applying it, though, is, is where the action is. And so you, bit by bit, the, the, bit by bit, the small becomes the large, right? And as my teacher used to tell me, teach me, if you're, if you're too big for the small things, don't be surprised if you're too small for the big things. Very wise counsel. So you'll find these guys that are really, really good at what they do, they pay attention to the little details because they've had to do that, right? Because they usually work their way up. And so don't be too big for the small things, right? And just one step after another. That's all you have to do. When you find a problem, get to a problem, you use the tools that you have to solve it or to figure out a way that you might be able to solve it. And then you do your best to solve it. And then you do it again the next time you get to a problem. And there will be problems in life, always. But there's always solutions. So I have one question, actually. Okay, go ahead. What do you think about Stoics? Are their philosophy a derivative of Sufis and all? What do I think about what? Stoics. Stoics? Stoics. Stoics, Stoics are cool. Yeah, if you want to go that way, sure, why not? It's a little bit harsh, I think, as, as it's presented. But I don't, you know, there's a fad. I mean, Stoics and, and uh, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, the British guy who, like, was always talking about Zen and Buddhism. Alan Watts. Alan Watts. Okay, Stoicism, Alan Watts, and Nietzsche. Those are the flavors of this decade, as far as I can tell, which is very peculiar because... You know, none of them, I think, are, are that central to anything, frankly. So uh, Stoicism is, is, is like Roman Taoism. But Taoism aren't that harsh, right? They're not that, that inflexible. A Stoic's going to be, I'm Stoic, right? A Taoist is going to be like, yeah, I'm, you know. Yeah, I do the same thing, but I do it easy. I do it softer. Unless I need to be hard. And then I'm hard, right? So I, I've read a little Marcus Aurelius and a little of this and that. And, and uh, who else? Stoic. Epictetus. Who? Seneca. Oh, yeah, Seneca. Seneca. Yeah, I have never read any Seneca. So, yeah, you could go that way, too. I mean, the problem with non-illuminated philosophers is they give you non-illuminated philosophy. And as much as I really admire and respect Marcus Aurelius, right? I don't know enough to say anything more than him about that. But these other ones I know of their level. Of, like Socrates was fully illuminated, man. The guy was... Pshoo. They didn't teach me that in school. So, so th there's a difference in, in, in flavor, a difference in, in approach. And, and I did a tweet on water. 
yeah. right? Read that. And somehow or another, people need to let me know that they've, you know, read something or other, because otherwise I'm going to have to, you know, do you see what I'm saying? It's kind of hard to not get any feedback at all. So, so if you feel like it, I think it'd be good to, you know, if you have any questions, just let me know. All right, but, but see, so, so nothing is softer than water, but nothing can stand up to it either, right? Because it's flexible, it's fluid, and it goes where other things don't want to go. And it doesn't look for reward, to, even though it nourishes all of us, and so on and so forth. You see, there's certain beauty to, to uh, certain approaches that, that makes me biased towards them, I suppose. And I have not studied Stoicism enough to say anything authoritative about it. I think, those, I think the general principles are good. But remember, the Buddha went through this too. Remember, he went through after he, remember he was filthy rich, had everything in the world, money, fame, women, castles, property, everything. He goes outside, he sees old age sickness and death, and he's moved, he feels compassion, right? And so he tried to be a, a stoic, an ascetic, right? And he didn't eat, and he like punished his body, and he, and he and I'm, not, I'm not saying that stoics do this, but you know. And after doing that for many years, he said, you know something, this isn't going anywhere. And so he went to the middle way, and here we have Buddhism, right? That's the, that's the legend of the story. So does that answer your question about Stoics and how I feel about them or think about them? I don't know enough to say anything, really. Uh, in general, I mean, in, in a country that, like, you know, and I'm also biased because I live in a very hedonistic country. And, and, and it's, it's causing the ruin of the whole place, right? I mean, everything has to be in balance, right? So we've gotten way out of balance. So stoicism certainly sounds like an anecdote, but it may be too harsh and too hard the other way. And so I think that the way to approach stoics would be through Taoism, which is not a religion so much as a, a, a way of life that, that looks at nature as its model, its simplicity and its comprehensiveness. See, there's nothing missing from nature, nothing at all. And it keeps going, even though nobody's there to, to run the thing. <laughs> it, it keeps moving, all right? And so that's why the, that appeals to me. And I think it, it should appeal to folks in the near future because we're going to have to rebuild, at least over here, it looks like. All right. Anything else before we stop, sir? No. All right. Good. Glad to see you making progress, man. Keep going. Excellent. Yeah.